Hi, I'm Sarah Riggs, and this is my book launch of my eavesdrop with Jack's Press, and it's happening in Tucson, Arizona, and in our backyard in Brooklyn. And the picture on the cover is by Ito Barada, and I want to dedicate the reading of the first poem to Laylee Long Soldier. This is my portrait of her and her daughter, and I had hoped to stop and see them in Santa Fe. So, until next time. I'll start by reading Gail Scott's blurb for the book. If in Sarah Riggs's Palm and Granite, language shimmers as register of pure light, eavesdrops iridescence signs the stakes of dance. Each sequence in deploying fresh ways to balance language differences brings the ear in touch with the whole of thinking bodies, bodies that are elements of the sky, yet knowing when to hit the sound bird of meaning, hard. The stakes are love and the existential tremor of our moment, culled in passing and in passion, from speech on three continents and dreams and ancient history, or yet eavesdropped from interior and exterior gleanings swimming under a sky full of drums. This exquisite pas de trois, engaging as text or subtext, English, French, Arabic, moves towards a stunning finale, hued in the dark, in the stark black and white of certain cemeteries. So I'm going to start by reading <clears throat> a poem that begins the section, the section Can We Transform? with the epigraph by Joy Harjo in her memoir, Crazy Brave. Rabbit tried to call the clay man back, but when the clay man wouldn't listen, Rabbit realized he'd made a clay man with no ears. Murmurations. I've seen flocks of birds switch directions nearly simultaneous to the microseconds. I've heard scientists explain it, but today I'm not interested in scientists. Unless they can explain the human soul, how it sits and waits, waits, hovers behind its body that is so utterly washed, fed, cooled and heated. How far is it from love? Who tells us we are animals and reminds us what kind of animals we are? I see as many planes as birds from my skylight in Brooklyn. Are we a species meant to fly? Things have always changed. The dinosaurs went extinct. People built the pyramids. Rome fell. What has swallowed us whole? Industrialization and tech? The unaddressed trauma of slavery and our founding genocide? Today, I listen to an indigenous prophecy that the female intuitive powers of the South will rise up to meet the destructive male forces of the North eagle and the condor. I try not to be essentialist. Our, the cinematographer is six years old, just to let you know. Thank you, Layla. Except that at our daughter's school, there are 20 green dragons taking out air conditioners, doing clothing swaps, making an edible garden, mostly women from Europe and one male director who moves as he must with the flock. And we are birds in our hearts, shifting directions, learning how to move together differently. 
that we were are far from earth and its life and need to heal. Some women in Ecuador have formed a spirit circle. They are holding the earth sacred. I've heard many say, we need to fight. How many years we have left? Ignoring the voices of all those we have trampled on to make our towers. I have noticed something. This is the time to transform. Individuality is overrated. Lonely, really. These amazing women are holding out their hands, asking us to stand shoulder to shoulder. And so it happens. We as a species shift directions. With the breath of our palms, we won't leave you behind. Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be here tonight for our Tucson launch of eavesdrop and I am going to be reading a welcome to the anonymous manifesto uh, an event which took place with the support of the poetry project and Ann Waldman who is one of the founders of the poetry project and which our organization Tomas, Earth Arts Justice, is doing a film on. And there were about 60 or 70 people in the room, poets and friends of poets. And I speak to inspire, and I speak to give thanks, and I speak to inspire love over hate. A welcome to the Anonymous Manifesto. All of us have hearts. All of us have eyes. All of us have fingers. All of us have some connection to poetry. Many of us are poets. Some of us are artists and editors and professors and performers. All are friends of artists and poets. We are not equal. Our traumas are not equal. Some traumas are a hundred times those next to their neighbors. Yet we are all equally animal, and we all have traumas, including the shock of coming into the world. And we are alive at this time. We are in a room at this time. We have hopes for the future. We care about many of the people we don't know. We care about animals and plants and trees and bodies of water. We care about cultures we have never visited. We are in the middle of a city here in New York, which is the financial capital of the earth in a civilization that has done more damage in hundreds of years than any other civilization that has been and continues to be for many an extremely popular civilization, less and less with our fascism. Nevertheless, a civilization which has not been asked to apologize and make amends in a deep and lasting way that has as its first value profit, and in its settler colonialist documents, equality and freedom, that does what it wants to because it is so powerful, the profit it has made on continued genocide and enslavement and abusive labor and imprisonment and violence of so many, that regularly declares war at strategic times to prolong the imperialist patriarchy. And in this city, we have tonight a space. Us, in this room, with no computers present. We have behind us and before us a history of manifestos, especially in the last hundred years, 
that matches the focus informing much of our work, a history of questioning existing structures, of taking things apart in brilliant ways. Now I believe we have a task before us that is stronger and more amazing than any we have faced as a group, which is to go around and under and through these abuses and buildings and corporations and technologies and intricate oppressions which are too big and too entrenched and have their tentacles around the world to be able to take down by force. And we must speak to the heart of things more radically than politicians can ever do, more subtly and complexly than protest signs allow. I believe we must hold our trauma before our eyes, our traumas as they are, micro and macro, and everything in between, so that we cannot run away but walk through, shoulder to shoulder. And we must hold them with the will to live. And we must hold them with the joy of being together, of getting to be together now. And together we can find ways to listen and to create together spaces where difference and variety and the honesty of what has been happening and what is happening now is the value. Not just for our communities in which we actively create and work with each other, but to reach toward and under. Where other people are valued with love, not how much they make and what color they are, and plants and animals are part of things, not for our benefit. May this manifesto in itself and the writing and teaching go beyond the comfort of our experimental communities. Because sometimes if you take the power to say, this is how it is, which I did as a young woman, I am going to be a poet which all of you have done in one way or another. There is so much courage in this room, much of which happens quietly while you are writing. Then you gather your energies, your resources, your connections, wrap your body and soul around it. Now I believe we need to decide collectively to be we get to envision how we want the future to be. Not how it will be, not that practical because we are poets, not the most practical of folks usually, but how we want it to be. To inspire others with our fierce energy for collective, diverse life. With our sense of beauty, of how communities can weave. The racial, this is hard to say, the racial capitalocene is killing life on and around the earth. And there's no machine, no political party, no individual strong enough to undo it. It needs to be everybody who possibly can working on it and to be people like us who understand we are all animals too. And there are millions of ways to live, not just being divided by the traumas and exhaustions that supremacy causes. We need the poets to argue for the soul of life. We are almost giving in that this is all getting away from us. But think, you who know this culture, this city, can you fly above it? Just you, naked in your clothes, with your pen and paper, can you fly up above this city? It needs people, it needs to be 
people like us who draw and scribble how things can be. I think of families I have met in the Atlas Mountains above Marrakesh who are depending on us to figure things out without even knowing we exist. In countries where there are no poetry centers, where there is a high density of poets in prison. Because if it's just about following a line on your phone about koalas dying in Australia from the fires, we will be doing this all the years to come until there are no phones left, just the burning and flooding. Let's get to the roots of things because we can. And let's fly on up because few among us even imagine it's possible. If we take everything into consideration, and so we don't, we don't think about it. I'm new to the synthesis of what has been happening all this time at a gut level, that's the key. And I have the energy now, so use my energy. A friend I met through our late beloved Stacy Doris told me this anecdote. A student is trying to solve a problem and keeps coming up with different solutions, trying them, failing, trying again, casting about. The Buddha says, perhaps it is not a matter of finding the right answer, but of asking the right question. And I believe our question is, can we transform? Now we need to look not only to humans who seem to react to direct danger, despite or perhaps because of all of our intelligence, but to other species, to the murmurations of starlings by the hundreds and thousands, making intricate little changes in synchronicity with others. Because if we believe the fire is now, which here in March at the spring solstice we do, we can fly, communicating in intricate, peaceful ways to each other. Let us, as poets and the friends of poets here with us today, make a sound so strange and beautiful that the flocks of birds fly up, the flocks of politicians and teachers and bankers and parents and construction workers and factory workers and tech people and traffic cops. This is our invitation to the species.